will make more memories and crown four more champions for this year's season here on 45 TV. We begin our coverage here from Williams Arena with the Class 3A semifinals right here again at Williams Arena. Hey, everybody, Chris Long with you as always, joined by a former Minnetonka and North Dakota standout, Marissa Caden. She probably needs no introduction, but since she's new to our team, we'll let you know she is a former Lakeville North Gophers and current Minnesota Lynx star. Rachel Bantam, welcome to the team. Good Thank to have you. you. Rachel, let's start out with you. What are you looking forward to as we get through uh, these next two days to crown our champions? I'm excited to see the true athleticism of girls basketball. I think in the last couple of years, girls basketball has really upped their strength, their athleticism, and their ability to move the basketball up and down the court. Rachel, you played in this tournament. You know what it's like to be here. What are you looking forward to? And does this bring back some memories from back in the day at North? Yeah, absolutely. Just high offense. Lots of scores, lots of shooters. I want to see a lot of three-point shots, and I know that that's what's going to happen. All right, they will start us off with Gila Sal and Simley, the one and four seed in the class. 3A bracket will play 4A tonight. Single A and double A semifinals coming up tomorrow. Here are some of the storylines we have in Triple A. De La Salle, they're coming back as champions. They're going to try to repeat. Well, Becker, they want a shot at De La Salle after last year's championship defeat. Simley beat Holy Angels. Boy, wait till you see Simley play. They're a fun basketball team. And Waconia, unseated, they've made the semis in their first trip to state. We'll count down the tip off of De La Salle and Simley coming up after this on 45 TV. The pregame show is brought to you by the Greater Twin Cities Honda Dealers, proud sponsors of Minnesota Youth Basketball. The defending champs, De La Salle, looking for their fifth title. They three-peated earlier in the decade. They won last year, Simley making their fifth or fourth trip to the state tournament. They're looking for their first title. Chris Long back with you along with Marissa Kate and Rachel Man and Marissa. What can you tell us about Simley? I saw them play ye yesterday. This is a fun basketball team to watch play. This is a fun basketball team to watch play. They're 28 and 2 with one of those losses coming to Hopkins, a 4A powerhouse. They're on a 25 game win streak coming to this tournament. Look for sisters TT and Chomp Donso to own the board, score a lot. De La Salle regulars here at the state tournament experience at a premium. These players will not be intimidated by the these settings. Tell us about the Islanders, Rachel. Yeah, De La Salle is super experienced. Uh, they have four out of their five starters averaging double figures uh, here in the regular season. They have continued to do so in the first round of state. All right, Dave Lee and Leah B. Olsen are going to call this game for us. We'll turn it over to them as we get set to tip off the best three days in the state if you are a girls high school basketball fan. We've got two semifinal days and championship Saturday ahead on 45 TV. At Becker. There is something special about being at the state tournament here this time of year, and we're going to kick this one off today on the 3A with Le uh, Leah Dave Lee here. And I want to talk a little bit about this matchup, Leah. Man, we're going to come right out of the gate with a dandy. Yeah, this is going to be a great game, and De La Salle comes in here knowing how to win state tournaments, but Simley comes in here believing that this is their year to win, and they're hungry, so how it's going to be a great matchup. How about our players to watch? Who are you keeping an eye on? All right, well, let's take a look here. N.J. Weems, an outstanding player, the leader of the De La Salle team, and her head coach said that her best players are hardest workers. She should be key in this game. And Zaria Chevry, she is outstanding. 18 points in the quarterfinals. She creates a lot of havoc on both ends of the court. Players to watch. Brought to you by Mills House. Try it out at the house. Hey, let's meet the players this afternoon. Let's take it down to Dave Giles. Minnesota State High School Girls Basketball Tournament. This Class 3A semifinal game features the Section 4 champion with a record of 25-4, and four, the Islanders from De La Salle High School, located in Minneapolis. And the Section 3 champion with a record of 28-2, and two, the Spartans from Simley High School, located in Invergrove Heights. We'll begin the introductions with the reserve players for each team. First, let's meet the reserve players for the visiting team, the De La Salle Islanders. Starting with a 5'5-inch five five 8th grade guard, number 10, Kendall Barnes. Five foot six 6 inch freshman guard, number 12, Harmony Thomas. Five foot seven inch sophomore guard number thirteen, Aitiana Salam. Five foot ten inch junior forward number twenty, Isabella Thomas. 
Five foot ten inch sophomore forward number twenty three, Maya Williams. Five foot six inch senior guard number thirty, Lucy Suick. Five foot six inch sophomore guard number thirty three, Ava Wood. Five foot six inch sophomore guard number thirty five, Patience Akuk. Five foot eleven inch sophomore forward number forty two, Sophia Noonan. Now let's meet the reserve players for the home team, the Simley Spartans. Starting with a five foot nine inch junior forward, number five, Ellie Rude. Five foot six inch sophomore guard, number ten, Clara Temke. Five foot seven inch freshman guard, number eleven, Laura Bozen. Five foot nine inch sophomore forward, number twelve, Ella Larson. Five foot eight inch junior guard, number twenty two, Sarah Orchard. Five foot seven inch junior guard number twenty three Mamisa Harris. Five foot six inch junior forward number twenty four Molly Stein. Five foot nine inch junior guard number twenty five Aaron Borchard. Six foot junior forward number thirty Abby Hepper. Five foot ten inch eighth grade forward number thirty two Avery Renslow. Five foot nine inch sophomore forward number thirty three Aviana Coleman. Five foot nine inch sophomore forward number thirty four Malia Miller. And five foot six inch junior guard number thirty five Kayana Sutton. Those are the reserve players. Now let's meet the starting lineup for this semifinal game. They will be introduced alternately starting with De La Salle. At forward, the six foot senior, number 22, MJ Weems. At forward for Simley, five foot 11 inch senior, number one, Kiwa Danso. At guard for the Islanders, a six-foot sophomore. Number two, Savannah White. At forward for the Spartans, six-foot sophomore. Number 15, Achampama Danso. At guard for De La Salle, five-foot tennis freshman. Number three, Kennedy Click. At guard for Sidley, a five foot ten inch senior. Number two, Sydney Stensgard. At guard for the Islanders, a five foot six inch sophomore. Number eleven, Piani Lockett. At guard for the Spartans, a five foot eight inch senior. Number three, Raven Miles. At guard for De La Salle, a five foot seven inch sophomore. Number 15, Sydney Runsway. And at guard for Sibley, five foot ten inch senior. Number 21, Zaria Shepri. The De La Salle assistant coaches are Ashley Ellis Milan and Danielle Ellison. The head coach of the Deal South Islanders is Kenesha Scott. The Simley assistant coaches are Logan Morse and Lindy Parker. The head coach of the Simley Spartans is Mark Stensgard. The officials for this semifinal game are umpire Keenan Moore, referee April Cubbish, and umpire Lee Meyer. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise? Remove your hats and face the flag as we honor America.
The national anthem today will be sung by Ryo Daniel. She is a senior at De La Salle High School. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still That's a spectacular way to start. <laughs> Leah, I just saw your mouth kind of drop open as you're looking at the uh, flag, and all of a sudden you had to turn to your left to say, holy smokes, can she sing? And I think that brings up a great point about the Minnesota State High School League. There's sports, athletics, there's so much yeah. more music being one of those. And so, wow, what a way to start uh, today's broadcast. Yeah, lots of talented athletes on the floor who have uh, many other skills. Obviously, beautiful rendition of the national anthem. Today's starting lineups brought to you by Education Minnesota, the voice for professional educators and students. See some all-state players in this game today as well. There's several of them on the court right now. Yeah, this is going to be a great way to uh, kick off day two of the state high school tournament. Our first day of broadcasting. Lots of athletic, talented players on the court here today. Yeah, and we can hear a crowd, which is kind of fun and <laughs> unusual and unique right now. Yes. Well, Simley has a basketball. That's him right there with it. To both these teams can move pretty well with or without the basketball. Pretty disciplined. So this is a really good matchup. You were talking beforehand. You were anxious to see this one. Yeah, I'm really curious about this Simley team because they really feel like this is their time to win a tournament. And boy, do they bring a ton of talent in here. But they're going up against the defending champs who know how to win at this level. Yeah, and obviously know how to play defense. <laughs> they sure do. There now underneath in a block. Scramble. Jump ball. Arrow goes to De La Salle. Well, really, these first few minutes of the tournament always so important for both teams. But look at the hustle down low, the defense, the block. That's what De La Salle is known for. Strong, solid defense. Savannah White way out on top. Got that low post right to the bucket. Waste no time. Good defense on the board. Chevry quickly inside this time. Not quite as deliberate. And again, a good shot. Strong board work. Underneath. That's Chomp. What they call her. Strong. Danzo. Strong physical presence down low. And, and she will try to control the board. She's an outstanding rebounder. That three is perfect. Lined up. Lockett puts her team on the board. You forget she's just a sophomore. Kiana Lockett will play like a senior. She's controlled, smart, headsy player. That was an impressive uh, run through that full court pressure. They had the shot they wanted. Free the other way. That's short. Stensgard. That's why she's all state. Part of it right there. Again, right to the bucket in the hands of Chevrolet. They're going to keep going to chop as much as they can. And, and early on, getting buckets in here at Williams Arena is really critical. Something to talk to Simley's head coach about. How do you feel? Yesterday, they, they played over at the Pavilion. Turnover. 
Leah, let's take a look at your keys for the game. Vila Cell, you have to use your experience and your depth. That's what you're known for. And similarly, they're a great rebounding team, as we can see already. And they really have to commit on the defensive end of the court if they want to come up big against Vila Cell. Keys of the game brought to you by the greater Twin Cities Honda Dealers, proud sponsors of Minnesota Youth Basketball. Simley out of Invergrove Heights. Ball knocked loose. Quick hands out there, but good recovery by Chevry. They bring him right back out to the top. Stensgard. She had 11 in that quarterfinal win yesterday. Again, the post is busy, Leah. Keep doing what works. Going to the right side for Chevry. Oh, not Chevy, excuse me, Chomp. Yeah, Danzo, she's already got six. Try that side. That's perfect. That's a three. Runsway. Another very talented player, Sydney Runsway. Fit 20 points in the quarterfinals. <laughs> There's a coach Stensgard right there. Did a nice job with this squad. Three years over at Simley. 64 wins already in those three years. Pretty good run all in early on. It sure has been. And Tanisha Scott letting her players have it. Yeah, yeah, she's, <laughs> she's on them early in this one. Yeah, quite a staff over there. We'll talk about them when we get a chance. Stensgard. And good pick. Runsway. Good defensive presence, but you'll see a lot of it in the game. This is Savannah White. She's just a sophomore. Again, right down to that low post. You like the way that Chomp is playing her down there. Yeah, and Chomp's very physical, so White's going to have to get used to being pushed around a little bit, but size-wise, it's a pretty easy, even battle down there. This is Chevrolet. Again, that might have been caused by Click getting her hand there to cause the trouble. Turnover, here comes Dila Sal. They're going to push it. Waste no time. That's the other Danzo, by the way. That's TT. Sisters. Mm -hmm. and here's where Simley has to settle in just a little bit because De La Salle's starting to turn them over and they're trying to get control of the game through their defense. So they have to get their offense set, look for good shots, and take their time. Miles guarded by White. Oh, they're looking for Chomp. What a nice defensive play and good recovery. And the TT Danzo is in the book. And those two create so many issues, the Danzo sisters on the court, because they're, you have to guard them both equally. And they create matchup problems. Yeah, because TT's 5'11", Chomp is 6 foot. Chomp's the younger one, just a sophomore. Yeah, pick your poison there. Lock it. Boy, did she have a game yesterday. 19 points. She's an All-State player. Right. Gets 10 a game. She needs 8 more. We're tied early on here at Williams Arena. And that's a great place to play. Yeah, this is one of the best places to play in the barn on the elevated court. Miles down to Danzo, and now a whistle down low. This will probably be on Run's way. Sydney will pick up the first foul of the game, actually. So it's been fun to watch it go back and forth here for a few minutes with no whistles. Time out. Early on, got a good one starting the uh, broadcast today here on 45 TV. The first half is brought to you by Sport Court of Minnesota. Champions star here. Receive a $50 Dick Sporting Goods gift card for every appointment made through March 31st. Welcome back to Williams Arena where this state tournament experience is extra special for the four seniors on Simley who have all been playing together since the eighth grade on varsity. That's five years of varsity hoops culminating in this moment right now, battling it out to make it to the title game. Coach Stensgard said the school, teachers, community, family, and friends, they've all been watching these girls for a long time. So they're super excited for this team to see their goals fulfilled here at Williams after having seen them being back-to-back -back conference champs, uh, state tourney, tournament teams this season, and these four seniors have been working so hard to get to this moment, Dave and Leah, that can you imagine 13 years old to making it here senior year? Yeah, now they're making their college decisions. We'll tell you about that in a second where some of them are going here. Lock it. Over to Isabella Thomas back in, and that long three-pointer is pulled down by T.T. Denzo. One of those seniors that Allie was just talking about. 
And, and that is one of the main reasons Simley is here. This team is senior laden. They play smart. They're physical. They're strong. But they just come in here with a very calm presence. And their head coach told me yesterday they, they didn't seem nervous for the quarterfinal game either. Stensgard. Off that pick. Nothing there. Now go low. Donza. She's got it. Good defense. Ball's loose. And it went a traveling violation. Closed captioning is brought to you by Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Together, we save. Boy, De La Salle, I mean, the defense of both teams is good. De La Salle, you and I have seen them through the years, but that's really kind of their marquee, isn't it? Yeah, their pressure that they, they apply to teams, it really changes the way that other teams play. So you really have to come in here ready for them. And, and once you start getting into little mistakes, they really take advantage. Oh, the left-handed runner. How about that one from Click? Everybody almost a score now. Just one starter, not in the books. Ten to eight. And De La Salle with the lead. Tanisha Scott, of course, the head coach. She is a graduate of De La Salle. Simley. Went too far away, about 30 minutes over to Invergrove Heights from Williams Arena. And now they're starting to look a little bit more at TT down low. They're switching off from Chomp to TT, and, and they really do need to take advantage of De La Salle down low and, and just a nice move, strong move to the basket to get herself to the free throw line. Averages eight points a game, the 5'11 senior. Next year, she's going to be playing at Bradley. First free throw of the game. In fact, uh, Chevry is going to Monmouth. And Stensgard's going to Montana State. Raven Miles, probably going to play somewhere, hasn't uh, decided that yet. She's a senior as well. But again, I guess it just speaks to Minnesota Girls Basketball League. It's just, it's always just continually getting better and better. And I, I mean, there can't be many of these states with a better level than they have right now here in the state. It used to be you have one maybe player play, going Division One on your team, but when you have, you know, four seniors who are going to Big Ten schools, that's impressive. Lock it. Stensgard comes out on her. Salam and boy, look at the length of that three-pointer. Tipped around, smartly done. Miles will bring it up. See something she likes, that scoop shot. On the rebound, that's going to be an over the top right there on NJ Weems. Well, take a look at some of the athletes out on the court right now. Student athletes 10 9. De La Salle with the lead. 45 TV is your home for comedy. Everyone has a favorite episode of Friends. Watch Friends five nights a week at 7 at 7.30 right here on 45 TV. There you go. You got like that guitar right there. Bands are pumped up. Good look at Simley. That is Raven Miles, the 5'8 senior. It's going to be a lot. Of, they're they're going to need a halftime break the way they're going at it right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They have been pushing the pace, that's for sure. On both ends of the court. Chevry guarded tightly out there by Click. And plenty of underclassmen here, too. Yeah, that's that's why you know the future is bright. TT. We got a little timeout. I, that's um, Aitiana Salam just having a little pain in her uh, legs to stop. But look at this pass. Yeah, this is what I really like. Simile, you can tell they've settled into their game, taking their time, running their offense, and looking for the open player. Isabella Thomas carries her teammate off to the bench, and she will sit back there with the trainer limping, holding her knees as she went uh, down. So I don't know if it's. Hopefully, there's something they can figure out here before she can back in the game. Anyway, as we look at it right now. Simley with the lead and on the turnover they'll have the ball and here comes Zaria Chevry guarded by Kiana Lockett go the other side and there again Danzo had the shots he wanted couldn't make it go rolls out of bounds that'll be De LaSalle's basketball 
Simile really trying to exploit the paint, trying to dump the ball down every single time. And DeLaSalle still looking to ways to slow that down a little bit. Four lead changes, two ties so far. Number one team in the state, DeLaSalle. Number three team in the state, Simile going at it in the state tournament. Islanders. Oh, there's an open look. Miles, strong board. That's her, Sydney Stensgard. Off of that screen, couple of screens. Nothing there. Good defense. Man, they covered that up, Leo. Yeah, they look at their defense. I mean, they are all over every player. Dodson's got position down there. Well, give her the ball. When she calls for it down low, you have to get her the ball. And she's going to do it the old-fashioned way, getting the rebound. Miles. Stensgard alone. Perfect. That's her first bucket of the afternoon. Four-point lead. Big shot for Stensgard. That should open things up to the Simley team. Simley's first three-pointer, too. De La Salle has a couple so far. Click. Thomas. Oh, again, defense works both ways. And then a foul called on the steal. This is against the Islanders. Stensgard, what she does well is shoot the three, and boy, that was a big three-pointer. Completely changes how you have to defend this team. You have to make sure you lock her down specifically on the three-point line. You know, that's interesting because we've seen those double picks at the top trying to get her free, and De La Salle does a beautiful job of picking her up. That's yes. the first time she's really had space. And, and they know because she's the best three-point shooter on that team. Now whistling a fall underneath. Let's head over to let's head over to Allie, see if we can get an update on that injury. Yeah, Dave, we watched Itiana Salam get helped off the court. She did get looked at by the trainer who then uh, assisted her into the locker room. There was significant limp, a lower body injury. Um, we're gonna keep you posted on if she does return. She put up nine points yesterday, so she's a significant player for Dila South. Danzo strong move to the hoop. She has eight. She had the first six of the game. They're really doing a great job on both sides of just really dumping the ball down low and scoring with both Chomp and TT. Runs way. Thomas. Well, we see Simley switch the defense a lot today. That runner off the glass. Kennedy Cliff uses everything up there. To get that one to go down and make it a four-point difference. It's a freshman, first-year member of this varsity squad as a freshman. Densgard momentarily had a two-on-one. Boy, nice kiss off the glass. Real soft touch. Yeah, Densgard's getting comfortable in this game, starting to show all the different things she can do on the offensive end. And then a quick shot down on the other end, and Simley is given one and done. Simile right now, I would say, is out hustling De La Salle. They're getting a little rebound. They're getting defensive and offensive boards. And, but what we know about De La Salle is they can pick it up on the defensive end of the court at any time. So right now you see De La Salle kind of pulling out their offense on a clear out so they can get some space to get Kennedy Click right down the middle of the court. De La Salle defeated a couple of 4A teams uh, earlier this year as well. Savannah White with a couple right there. They played uh, St. Michael Alberville, a really nice team. Beat them. They beat uh, Eden Prairie. So they have a heck of a schedule. The drive too far underneath for Stensgard. And now a chance to cut this gap even a little bit more for the Islanders. And they'll try it with a three. And it doesn't touch anything except the twine there and click. Lives up to her name. Your name is your destiny. <laughs> it's a big time shot for a freshman. Oh, a little hesitation. Not going to go. Again, strong board work inside. And that's a jump ball. That's going to stay in the hands of the Spartans of Simley. I really like the tenacity of the Spartans battling for the boards. Look at that launch right there. Takes you to break. Good game here at Williams Arena. See who showed up. The fan cam brought to you by Xfinity Mobile, the new kind of network designed to save you money. Yeah, baby. 
this afternoon crowd is acting like it's seven or eight at night. They got it going. Sometimes you get out of school and you come to term in the afternoon and subdued. Not here, not right now. Good energy in here. How about that? <laughs> Good to see. It's good to be at an event where there's fans. And we are into this game. I mentioned the coaching staff for De La Salle. Man, they've got some people over there. You know, Ashley uh, Ellis Milan, second year. She's a former Golden Gopher player yeah, here. One of the great ones. Just like yourself. Something special about this court for you, Leah. Has to be, huh? It's, it's just such a cool place to stay, and I'm glad that they, you know, stuck with the barn. They have the new Athletic Village, but they they keep the games here in the barn. Rebound. Wing. He's going to push it coast to coast. Block. And good follow. Heads up. Savannah White. Boy, look at the defense. The blocks have been pretty impressive. Nice clean block both sides. Yeah, nothing is easy. On the offensive end of the court right now for De La Salle. They're pushing the pace, trying to get into the lane and get some easy points. But Simile's there waiting for them. And defensive blocks all over the place. Foul on that play. That is uh, Weems going in hard now. She had 20 yesterday. She's an All-State player. Thousand point score. She did that back on January 28th. No points yet in the game until just uh, this is her opportunity. Well, and it speaks to the depth of this De La Salle team is that they have a lot of options on, for both offense and defense. But no, you want to get Weems involved in this game because she usually, on an average, will give you 15 points a game along with about nine to ten boards. There's the numbers. Yeah, those boards almost a double double this year every game. That's knocked out of bounds by the Islanders. Oh, well, wait a minute. They just changed the call. Boy, Coach Stensgard not happy. He's trying to figure this out. Oh, man. Simley fans are letting the officials know what they thought of that call. Well, Stensgard's still hot. He's still going after the official. Shot off the uh, baseline, and now there's all sorts of traffic. And now they call a foul again on Simley. Supposed to be a free throw opportunity here. Simley defense down low. There was three players hands up. They get in a little follow trouble there, but defensively they've been strong in this match. Yeah, no shot, I guess. Yeah, we'll go on to the bucket and inbound the ball. That's Kennedy Click. Freshman starting on this uh, defending state championship team. There's Savannah White to Grant. Grant was here today, had a nice chat with him before the game. Yes, always good to see Frank White. Frank White. One of our favorites. Raven Miles. He gets this offense going. There's Stensgard. Sees a run to the hoop and takes it. And good board work. And there's that lead pass. I see this fast break. Runsway's got it all by herself. There you go. There's some easy points for De La Salle. They can push their offense and get some run outs. Aaron Borchard's in the game. That's going to be blocked, but that's also going to be a foul like on De La Salle. I'll tell you, neither one of these teams is wasting any time getting down court. It's a great outlet pass right there by Savannah White, and it allows for a nice, easy bucket on Sydney Runsway. This is Aaron Borchard right there driving there and just came to the game. Yeah, those block shots, it's like you're so tempted as a player because you want the block so <laughs> yeah. bad. Your coach always gets mad at you when you do that. Yeah, because most times it doesn't seem to go your way. <laughs> right, exactly. You usually send someone to free throw line, but sometimes you're also sending a message. Stay out of the lane. It's like that reaching in fall, right? When you reach in, your coach just... That's, oh, that's like one of their primary sins. Yes. Even if you don't touch somebody normally, that seems to get called. And we, we have replay in the games today, too, by the way. If, if we need to use replay, we can. We'll talk more about that later. Hopefully we won't have to get to that. <laughs> exactly. But. Open look. That's a good-looking shot. 
but a little bit shy and good board, board work again by Danzo. We talked to Coach Stensgard. She's come a long way this year, hasn't she? And she's become, I mean, one of the better ones in the state. Lost it right there. That's my fault as soon as I say something like that. <laughs> You've done it again, yeah. Dave. <laughs> Borchard. There's that pick. Miles too much. Chomp with the board. Trying to get free. She does over to her sister, TT, and then a foul underneath. And this will be against NJ Weems. And that'll be her second, I believe. Let me double check this. See if you Nobody's in any kind of foul trouble yet, no. but she does have two and you don't be for sure. But as you said, man, they're so deep at the They really are. They're well coached. I mean, Tanisha Scott does a fantastic job with her young players out there. And, and remember, this is a very young team that she has brought to state. Just calmly puts in two free throws. Three-point lead now for the Spartans of Simley out of the Metro East Conference where they ran 14-0 this year. Open look. Doesn't take long to get that shot off. Just off the mark. Danzo. Boy, it's fun to watch these two teams work the boards. Stensgard. Underneath everybody. Too much. Uh, he's going. You can tell Stensgard's really getting comfortable in this game. Really attacking well. But on the other end, Savannah White. And she'll draw the foul. Look at the way that they're pushing the pace, and I like the way that the 5'11 sophomore Savannah Wake controls her body, reads the defense, and how about the little lay-in right there? That's yeah. some nice-looking basketball. Yeah, that, that was uh, complete body control, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. And for a sophomore to have control of her body like that, it's a good sign for DSL. Against the pressure, it's impressive to see how Simley breaks that press because I, you and I both know through the years how good De La Salle is yes. at full court pressure. Yeah, I think they've done a great job in this first half. It's going to open. Oh, 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 oh. Do you have to call oh. that? Yeah. Wow. We've worked together too long, Dave. <laughs> Four point lead now for Simley. Did you like it when the three-point shot came in? Yeah, I like how it's changed the game. I know a lot of people don't like what's happening now in the WNBA, NBA at the higher levels, but it's definitely happened in high school, too. Miles stock block. Boy, these fans are awesome. 25-23, simply with the lead. This is 45 TV opening day of the semifinal round in girls basketball. TV here, some of the best players in the state, the All-State team, and Sydney Stensgard, Dave, has been outstanding in this game for Simley, and just a really fun, strong player to watch, but Kiana Lockett, another one, one of my favorite players to watch, well-rounded. N.J. Weems kind of working herself into this game, but that list is uh, pretty impressive right there. We'll take three more of them in the, in the sure uh, next will. game. Sure will. Simley with the lead. Really fun basketball to watch right here. A lot of talent on the court. That three-pointer's blocked. Good hustle, Porcher. What a play. Keep the ball alive. You know, you've noticed that. These good teams down here don't give up on blocks. Just kind of keep going. Yeah, I'm liking the deal itself. Block party. They are all over the place. Miles trying to draw a lot of people in. She does, and on the pitch out to Borchard, the ball goes back in. That's a jump ball. That's De La Salle's. Raven Miles coming back after the bad ACL injury and having a great season for Simley. Shevry coming back in the game. Zaria had 18 points yesterday in the quarter. This is Runsway, Sydney Runsway, over to Kiani Lockett. That's Lockett right there. She sees an opening. That's oh, rare. That's a rarity from her. The Simley defense, they're doing a nice job of forcing De La Salle into some outside shooting. Oh, 
There's that pressure. And that is finally, that's the first time they've been able to take advantage of it. And right there's Weems in her hot spot, or just a perfect spot, her sweet spot right there. Good way to get yourself into the game, let the defense lead the offense. You know, normally Simley breaks that press fast. Last time they were a little more deliberate and it cost them. We're tied. Look at that defense. Man, what a matchup. Nobody's getting breathing in the room either side of the ball. TT. Weems. Simley Good. having a harder time getting the ball down low. And underneath, kept her pivot foot. MJ Weems back into this game in a big way. Six points. Took a while to get the, to, in the uh, scoring column. Now she's been on fire for De La Salle with that two-point edge. Chop. Oh. That's going to be a foul offensively against Simley. Look at this again. Love the defense here by N.J. Weems. Gets the ball coast to coast. Long, strong, but great pivot move right there to lay that in. Good to see Salam back up. Oh, that is good news. Yep, she's out here running. Went down, if you're just joining us, went down earlier with uh, something that looked like in her knee or something, but maybe it was a Charlie or something like that. Weems, she's on fire. That time just throws to the floor. That's going to be a turnover against Dila Sapp. The assembly defense is making it difficult to get anything down low and easy for Dila Sapp, kind of forcing them to beat him with perimeter play. You know, so many of you are joining us from out state, I know, uh, from experience that a lot of people are watching this, not just in Minnesota, and you're saying, now, where are these schools? Well, Simley is in Inver Grove Heights, about 30 minutes basically south of Williams Arena, maybe a little southeast. De La Salle is two miles from yeah. Williams Arena on the <laughs> island here, right in downtown Minneapolis. So if you're wondering where these two schools come from, and not familiar with the metro area, that's it right there. Islanders in an 11 of the last 15 state tournaments and that three is launched high by Runsway. She's got her second one of the game. And one might get Simley out of that zone defense. Stengar goes down hard, no whistle. Simley fans want one. De La Salle weaves on a hot streak, a wide open three again and another one goes down for Runsway. Here they come. Boy, does that change the dynamic suddenly? Coming up on the 30-second mark. Miles down low. Oh, boy. Pass it off the hands. Good save. What an effort. Wide open. Stensgaard. No, oh, no. Everything but a bucket. Now with 15. Dean LaSalle runs. Plenty of time. Take like, your time on this. Yeah, they're not used to backing it up. they got to worry about 17 seconds on the clock. White. Block. Oh, man, it is our party, Leah. There's a shot, and that's going to fall shy. Buzzer goes off. That's the first half. That was fun. A good half of basketball right there. Look at these threes. Adila Self getting hot from the three-point line. Runsway hits a big one, and then right after that, another wide-open three. Let's go down courtside. Allie's with Coach Tensgard. Coach, you have preached defense, defense, defense. We've seen you switch it up a little bit in the first. What were you seeing? Um, well, we're trying to look to see if they could shoot in this environment right away. We wanted to start out matching up first. Then we went to a little zone just to see if, how they would shoot. We uh, we played super well. We gave up a couple easy ones right there at the end. A couple turnovers kind of killed us. But, hey, it's playoff basketball and super fun environment. What do you want to see out of your team offensively as this game could come down to the wire? Well, we have to be more patient. I think we have some aggressive players inside. We got them in fall trouble a little bit early. We got to be able to break their press, look up the court, and take advantage of some of the easy buckets that we can get off the press. Thanks, Allie. Well, coming up in a few minutes, it's a 33-25 lead here for De La Salle, the defending state champs. But Chris is going to have Eric Martins on. Eric is the president of the Minnesota State High School League, and he's going to address what all of us are talking about. That's coming up next. Stay tuned to 45 TV. 
Halftime is brought to you by Tria Orthopedic Center for the athlete in all of us. There is Tria, the defending champ, Dela South, closed the first half on a furious 12-0 rally. They lead Simley 33-25 here in our first class 3A semifinal of the girls' basketball tournament on 45 TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Long, back with you at Williams Arena. I'm joined now by the executive director of the Minnesota State High School League, Eric Martins. I want to talk about, as Dave Lee said, sort of what everybody is discussing first. An announcement on how crowds are going to be handled the rest of this tournament and not just this tournament, also for boys' section play. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Really appreciate being able to be with you here at 45 as we as we walk through times that we've never experienced before. And so we're trying to make decisions in the best possible way for our student participants, for our schools, and obviously for community health. So uh, what we're instituting at this time, starting tomorrow, Friday, we are going to go to limited fans for our events. Uh, that means that our member schools are going to be selecting a list of fans based on their participants that they submit to us, and then those individuals will come in via ID and, and be able to take part in that game. Um, we're also instituting that for our section boys basketball starting tomorrow. Um, we do have some section finals tonight, and so those are moving forward with the same rules that we have in place right now. And so uh, tomorrow it's a different game, and so we're working and really relying on our member schools to help us identify that list of students and to be prepared as we go forward. So um, we also have adapted floor hockey that is starting tomorrow. Um, again, we're going with limited fans for that at this time. And I would also say that we remain in flux, and every every hour we get new information. We continue to take that in. Uh, we've had some great partnerships. Minnesota Department of Health has been outstanding in providing us with the most recent information for the state of Minnesota. That may look different than the NCAA or the national events that are going on in other places, um, but they've been incredibly helpful, and all of our decisions are made based on their input and the information they provide for us. All the information, if you're wondering if you can or can't go to games starting tomorrow, it's on the Minnesota State High School League website, mshsl.org. Also, I saw no consolation tournament, no third place games for this tournament either. Exactly. Uh, unfortunately, again, we're trying to make the best decisions we can. We open up another venue if we want to go to Constellation in third place. That becomes another management challenge. We do want kids to have opportunities, and yet what's the limit that we can put in place and still have it be acceptable within our public and for our schools? You touched on it a little bit when you said who you're consulting with, but there will be people who will watch on TV and say, well, why are they playing? You're getting a lot of input when you make these decisions, and, and the last 24 hours have been difficult for everybody in every sport anywhere in the country. Yeah, it has been. The NCAA in the last 24 hours has changed the message three different times. And so, uh, again, we rely on the health experts and the authorities here in the state of Minnesota. They know our situation best. They've been, like I said, outstanding in providing us information. The message that they want to send and that we want to send is we want people to be healthy. We want them to make really good choices. If they're going to attend, make sure that you are 100% healthy. If you're not feeling well, please refrain from attending. We have opportunities to watch our games on broadcast, fortunately, and uh, at this time, that's what we would expect our folks to do if they're not feeling well or have encountered those that are not doing well right now. A lot of people start wondering with this tournament here, the boys tournament at Target Center next week, first of all, the amazing flexibility that's been required from all the venues, but is there a timeline for making a decision on that boys basketball tournament? Yeah, the, the timeline is whatever information we get. Right now we're doing uh, draft proposals of what that might look like, work our way through um, the section tournaments here with boys, and then make the best possible decisions that we can. Obviously the University of Minnesota Concordia College have been great with us and working with us as to what we need to do um, and we'll continue to do that as we move into U of M and Target Center for next week and also we remain uh, reliant on the authorities as far as what they're telling us we can or can't do with, with large group kinds of events. Alright, so again the big news, limited crowds for all MSHSL events starting tomorrow. Uh, it's been a crazy couple of days. Thank you for your time Eric Martin, the Executive Director of the Minnesota State High School League. Again, you can find all of the details on the release. It's right at the top of the webpage right now, mshsl.org. We'll be back with Dela Salas in the second half after this. Dela Salas leading Simley 33-25 here in the first of our two Class 3A semifinals on 45 TV. Chris Long rejoined now by Marissa Kate and Rachel Bannum. A frenetic pace in that first half. Marissa Simley got that lead, and then the champs came back swinging. Yeah, I think Simley did a great job in the beginning of that first half dealing with De La Salle's full-court pressure. I think the key in the second half is they have to continue to get the ball past half-court 
and into their post players. Rachel, your thoughts on that first half? Uh, it, it was fun. You know, both teams were scoring, but De La Salle ended up ending the half really, really strong, hitting a bunch of threes. That's something you're going to have to continue to do. Stay confident, move the ball against that zone. Both of these teams have a very deep roster. A lot of different players can score, and we're seeing a, how diverse the scoring is. But I'll tell you what, for De La Salle, Rachel, Sydney runs right. I mean, just a sophomore, so much points, 11 points in that first half. Uh, she just continues to keep doing what she's been doing. Uh, the first game of the tournament, she had 20 points, and she just keeps doing it. She's three for three from the three. Uh, she's leading the way for this team, and like you said, only a sophomore has been playing very well. Has to continue to do so. She had 20 points in the quarterfinal win over Hermantown. Marissa, what do you think about her game? Yeah, you know, I think this De La Salle team is really well-rounded. Any one of their players on any given night can step up, but Runsway has really shown that she wants this game. As for Sibley, they came out, Sibley, excuse me, absolutely came out firing in that first half, and, and they were led most of the way uh, Marissa by champ now, so. Yeah, we knew that Chomp was going to have a big game. She's four for four from the field, two for two from the free throw line, has six rebounds, so she's definitely leading the way for the Sibley Spartans in this first half. Rachel, how impressed were you? I, we, we were talking about before, said so this might be the most entertaining team we're going to see in this tournament, Sibley. Uh, they're, they're not disappointing at all. Score scores, shooting, they got to continue to do so, um, but, you know, keep being aggressive on defense and getting rebounds. Today's stats are brought to you by Friends and Bank and Trust. Real people, real results. Marissa, what do we glean from that? I think the big story for me is turnovers and points off of turnovers. De La Salle started to turn Simley over in the first half with their full court pressure. Simley has to find a way in the second half to deal with that. Three-pointers have become such an important part of this game. Seven of them in that first half. Good thing, they're raining threes. That guy's ready for rain. Go back to David Lee and Leah B. Olsen. Allie Mosley is with Tanisha Scott. Thanks, Chris. Coach, in those final minutes of that first half, it seemed as though De La Salle started to gain some more some momentum. What were you seeing? Yeah. Well, we started hitting some shots. We started hitting some shots, and we started getting pressure on the ball. I think that really helped us at the end of the half. It's kind of a rare sight to see a team come out with seven minutes left of halftime for a shoot-around. What were you wanting to see out of your team in the second half, getting them back out here early? Um, I just want them to get shots up and, you know, and just get going, you know, get their confidence in their scoring and going to the basket. How do you make sure that you keep Simley contained in the second half? Pressure. Pressure I'll have. You got it, Coach. Thanks. Dave? All right, thanks, Sally. Tanisha Scott, great player up at Minnesota. The Luke point guard up there started all four years, and her assistant's Ashley Ellis Milan. We talked about her, played here for the Gophers at Williams Arena. And uh, Danielle Ellison played up at the University of St. Cloud, and uh, the, her and Ashley was there too. They both played at St. Paul Central, Lee, as you know. C.J. Hallman, an alumni of De La Salle, head football coach too. And so they got quite a staff here. It's quite a resume. Yeah, it's a fantastic staff. And I mean, I would love to see just the coaches on a game, play a game, and maybe the two coaching staffs could have a halftime game because there's so much talent sitting yeah. right there. Yeah, and uh, Sadika's there too. She's in her fifth year, won the state championship at Minneapolis South High School, and coaches. Look at these teams making their first appearances to the state tournament. This is so exciting. And, of course, Waconia is going to be coming up next. But that's, that's the exciting part is to get to see the teams that we haven't seen come through here before. And, yeah. You know, some of them you get pretty accustomed to seeing, like a deal of sell. Yeah, that Waconia is such a pretty town, isn't it? Oh, that's yeah. a gorgeous little spot. Logan Morris, Lindy Parker, Shani Morris, Tyler Storm all helping out on that coaching staff. For Coach Stensgard of Simley, and away we go in half number two. Man, it was fun. Good basketball. Huh? Yeah, some great basketball. And let's see if Simley can get back to what they did strong in the first part of that first half is get the ball down low to their post players. See how much physicality they allow into the bucket. That might be a real key to the second half, and that shot is a good one, but just short. That's the one they want for Danzo. Yeah, nice look to the basket. Just comes up a little, a little bit short. Back in that up will be Savannah White now. This is interesting. Boy, they waste no time going to the hoop. Look at that. She's got a, well, she momentarily had a spot. Powers her way up after a great play by Stensgard. Here comes Miles. Push it up. Chevry, Stensgard. Off the glass, too much. And the sisters, boy, they may be too unselfish down there, Leah. Yeah, they're both down there battling for rebounds, passing the ball to each other. 
They are so important to this team, and they, they kind of keep everything <laughs> moving and flowing for Simley. If I got a layup, I don't think I'm giving it to my brother. <laughs> you know, it's not how it works that's, in your uh, yeah, might, no, Probably not. I think in most, she just handed it back. So, But really, there can't be a point where you're too generous on a, in a basketball game. Well, this is quite a year for Chomp. I mean, we talked about her maturation as she has come from last year to this year, and she's become just one of the better players in the state. She's got 11. First missed free throw attempt for her today. Islanders. Oh, what a nice dish. Weems gets it back out. White's going to save that from going over her back, right down to that. Very last part of the court that she could. Savannah White, 5'11 sophomore, does a lot of the setting up of this offense. And that drive, how do you stop that? Yeah, she's so long and lean that when she takes it to the basket, it's really difficult to slow her down. Again, you heard Scott talk about the pressure. That's it. There's Miles trying to get a spot. Danzo, and that one's not going to go. Chomp Danzo picks it up and in. That's really Simley's bread and butter, the ability to get the offensive boards and get second chance points. Keani Lockett. Oh, there's another block. This time it's TT Danzo. Keani Lockett, Tri Metro, first team, all conference player, all state player, too. So she's. I mean, again, getting right back to what you said at the start. So deep. Look at that play by Stensgard. Pure hustle against White. They're not going to get it. But she'll draw the foul. Yeah, she has played well in this basketball game. Really being aggressive and looking to get to the basket. Here's just the hustle. The drive kind of trips a little bit right there. They really need her to stay aggressive, and they also need her to look for her three-point shot. Does that really loosen things up for Simley in the first half of the game? She had 11 yesterday. She's another one of those All-State players we talked about. Well, that's good to see. Itiana Salam back in the game after going out uh, injured in the first half. Stensgard gets the backside of those two. Makes it a... Six point lead now. De La Salle. There's a good look for three. It's going to be an air ball. Rebound. That's a good smooth move by Runsway. Neither one of these teams give up on any shots, and now she's got a chance at a three point play. Yeah, Runsway's just playing with a, a different emotion in this game. She's at another level, and, and boy, her, her willingness to stick with the play. She goes in. Just a nice little floater right there in the lane. She's just had an outstanding game. Sydney, 13 in the game, 20 yesterday. First made free throw, I think, right there by De La Salle today. Missed three in that first half. Chevry, Stensgard. Going to move it around, try that low post. That's Miles who hands it to Denzel. Can't hit it. Oh man, I think she wants that one back. Yeah, that's a frustrating shot to miss. Sometimes you just go in with a little too hard. Lock it. Oh, almost a double dribble, almost a bunch and let him play. Kind of like that. Chevry lays it out with the hand and just smoothly. Probably gets the first bucket of the day. That's finesse basketball right there. Great passing, nice ability to finish for Chevry. You find yourself sometimes as a player wanting to hurry and get it up there. She just kind of just laid it out. Patience. As much as you can be patient on a fast break, I guess. <laughs> exactly. She, she looked calm and collect doing it. Well, turnaround jumper, boy, that's deadly right there. Yeah. MJ Weems. She is a difficult player to slow down. She brings so much to this game. Being very patient this time, bringing it down. Chevry. De La Salle. Very aggressive. That man to man. Danzo guarded by Weems. On that left side baseline. Will give and go and up and in. She's out there looking for her. 
seven point lead. The Islanders, the defending state champs. Lockett. The quick. Lockett to the hoop. And again, another opportunity at three. I'll tell you what, Keanu Lockett is fearless. She went into that lane, not worried about who was going to block her shot. She figured she could finesse it in, and she does. Is that coming right from Tanisha Scott, that quick when they, it's like they have just a slow move and then boom, they're going right to the hoop. Yeah, she has a quick first step. And it's kind of figured out how to get inside. She's driven to the basket and had her block shot and has made some adjustments. De LaSalle, number one in the state. Simley, number three in the state. Lock it. Gets the three-point complete, and that's a 10-point spread now for the Islanders. Take a break here on 45 TV from the girls' state 3A semifinals. For a the second half is brought to you by Polymet Mining, working to produce the copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. Back on 45 TV, there's your band. Good luck keeping this crowd active. I think this. There we go. Yeah. Out of this world, baby, right there. Jamming over there. Yeah, they're just getting it done. That might be the outfit of the day so far. Might be the outfit of the tournament. I'm not sure we'll see a lot tomorrow. Some full court pressure going on here. Yeah, they don't they don't uh, slack off. I don't think the drills are doing practice, but they must do some really good drills to keep everybody fresh the whole time. That's a foul on the shot. Let's go down courtside, Allie. Of this very experienced Simley team who were so close to the state tournament last year when they lost their section final by just one point and so became their motto for this season one more coach says it comes down to not just one more basket but one more rebound one more defensive stop one more sprint and one more game and there's only one more after this one so you know that motto is in the forefront of every Simley player's mind right now Thanks, Allie. And Savannah White right there, the uh, sophomore, 5'11", really kind of plays almost a guard position. Nails the free throw. Yeah, she's versatile that way. I noticed they used her to bring that ball up the court. She's also, you know, hit some three-point shots. She's, she can hit, she can play as a post player as well, and that's kind of the modern-day player. Similar. Chevy, well, one of the good things that the, the Dean Cell defense has done is really kept her in check. Stensgard, lock it all over her. Wow. And then a foul is called. Stensgard will go to the free throw line. She's one of two from there. Yeah, she's been effective in this game because she's attacking the basket so well. Five ten senior. Shooting very good coming in the uh, tournament. 50% from the field. And on three pointers, I had to double check it when the coach told us this. 45% on yes. three pointers. And they would love for her to hit a few more in this one. She's hit two, but they're not giving her space. Yeah, they know she's the player to slow down. Yeah, they saw the stat sheet, I'm sure. 44-35, <laughs> got both of those, though. Lots of time left in this one. Here's White. Weems threw it out to lock it. The sophomore will set up her offense. And White spots a three, and she got it. Boy, that's really what got them that lead at the end of the first half. Yeah. And Dealey so ever since they had that run at the end of the first half, they've just really been controlling this game. Oh, drop. You know, they break that press, and then DeLaSalle doesn't give up, and they knock the ball loose, and on the scramble, that's DeLaSalle's basketball. I like the confidence here. It's a nice open look, nice follow through on the three point shot. She knew that was going in. Yeah, they've done it. Really shot well in their threes. White trying to drive. That one got, uh, that took one too many steps. Oh, 
see if Simley can get, figure out a way to get out of this full court pressure and get some early offense. Our largest lead of the game right now, 12 points. In the first half was back and forth, a lot of lead changes, a lot of ties. And then, as we mentioned, De La Salle went on a, just a flurry of three-point shots and opened it up all of a sudden. They've maintained and built on the lead. They're past too much. They had the mismatch, too. It's becoming so difficult right now for Simley because De La Salle, they don't have very many weaknesses at all. They're so tight defensively. They have so many options offensively. Forces teams to play perfect games against them. White pick. Again, Stensgard tied her up. And they'll call a foul on Sydney Stensgard right there. That'll be her first. Yeah, Savannah White is really, uh, from what we see, I mean, earlier this season, boy, she, she aggressively will go right after that hoop, outside or inside. I mean, she's become another weapon in that deal. So Arsenal, there's a nice baseline runner by Runsway. Savannah White can really play any position one through four. Chevron. Guarded by Runswell. And there was uh, an offensive foul on Raven Miles, a 5'8 senior, away from the ball. And they go the other way. Gila Sal really starting to get confident now with a 14 point lead. Leah B. Olsen here along with Dave Lee. Leah B. played on this court in college. Uh, not this court. Yeah, this court. Because they actually changed the surface. But that's, that's the only right. thing they changed, isn't it? It wasn't quite this light color. No, do you like that? I've like gotten it. used to it. I actually like how it looks on TV, though. Does it matter as a player, do you think? I mean, no. it was a darker, it was a regular wood-looking floor before. Look at that defense. Man. Yeah, they picked it up a little bit. They realized they needed that intensity. Nobody there to follow. Ooh. She followed that shot beautifully. Kennedy Quick. Boy, take a lesson if you're playing yes. at a younger player following your shot. Second chance point. So critical in these games. Timeout, Coach Stensgard. 51-35. De La Salle now really revving it up here. And you like the Simley team a lot. Timeout on the first game. Of our four today here on 45 TV, we're back next. Hey, great to have you wherever you're watching. One of the fun things for Lee and I during the summertime, we're running into a lot of people statewide that watch these broadcasts on 45 TV. And I know we got a lot of good Metro watchers and viewers right now, but out state, uh, great to hear from you. We can hear from you on the tweets. And, it's really nice to see the kind of crowd that you and I both remember as kids growing up watching state tournaments. There's something magical about it. Yeah, this is the best. This is where it all starts, where everyone loves the game for the... And those names you hear, and then you finally get to see yes. them play. You know, if you're outside of the Metro and you hear, oh, I hear about De La Salle, and I hear about uh, Lockett and Runsway, and I get to see them now. What a move by Zaria Shevry. She was hoping that she'd get a foul call on that one as well. Lock it. Good hands. Danza comes out on her. Try it the other way. This is Savannah White. Stensgard will give her a little bit of room. Taking a little risk to give her a little space out there. You know what I like about De La Salle? They're all wearing the same tennis shoes. Inside, Weems. That's, I mean, I, I, that's like an automatic. Yep. It, they were real patient there, too, right now, De La Salle. They're just taking their time. They're looking for the best option. They're running their plays. But you don't see that. You don't, teams, that's pretty much individual shoe choice, but De La Salle, everybody's got the same one. Oh, yeah, that's I right. Like you like that because it's old school, Dave. But <laughs> they're good looking shoes, though. I'm giving them that. Yeah. Chevry. Open left Miles for three. A little shy. Oh, oh. Danzo coming out to get that board. And a nice pass to Miles. Trying to draw the foul as she laid it up. Didn't get it, but there is one under the bucket. And this should put Chomp Danzo. 
check out our game summary brought to you by Catholic United Life Insurance Annuities and Retirement Products. Felix Bell doing it with so many different players. We expected it to be Runsway, but White is having a huge game as well as Weems and Simley doing it with the, their sisters out there, the dance of sisters, and Stensgard has had an outstanding game as well. What a beautiful block and a great recovery, too. Simley and De La Salle. And here we get the fast break. And the layup is put up and in by Kennedy Click. What an impressive freshman. Yeah, but the freshmen we're going to see at this state tournament are outstanding. Some of this is like one of the best freshman classes that we've ever had in the state. So it's pretty cool to see. Weems, good anticipation. She's going to right back from White. NJ, the spinner, and a little bit of traffic, and she is going to draw a foul. That's fortunate because she kind of got caught in there by the defense. And that'll be on Simley. So NJ Weems, 6'1", senior, all-state player, 1,000-point scorer. She did that back in January this year. She's something else. Tri-Metro Player of the Year as well. And they've really had to rely on NJ Weems being the senior on the team, the only senior that starts, and really having to be the leader to run this team, to get everyone on the same page. And... Yeah, and it defends the perimeter so well in the low post defensively. Yeah. She does a little bit of everything, and, and as I said at the top of the game, Coach Scott said it's so great when your best player is your hardest worker. Just a little struggle at the free throw line today. That's about it for her. Raven Miles coming back from that nasty injury. Having a great season for Simley. Stens got it. Ball's knocked loose. There's a scramble for it. And look at this. De La Salle hangs on to it. Little alley up to the side. Little catch back and forth. And foul. Or we don't know yet. Still waiting to see. I think it's going to be a foul now the way they're walking out there. And that'll be against Simley. And that'll be free throws right here for Keani Lockett. There's one too many passes. There's the shot right there. You don't need to pass that back. Yeah, that's that's where you want to. You talked yeah. about you know being too yeah. unselfish. Yeah. That's where you're too unselfish. I'm out there. I pop it. Get me. <laughs> exactly. I'm out thirty points. feet out. I pop it. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Guiding once told me in baseball, yep. nobody pays to see a single hitter. There you go. <laughs> Here's a shot up and in. Lockett, she's a sophomore. I mean, uh, you know, there's some senior leadership. You just talked about that with Weems, Leah. And then you look at these young kids. They're yeah. getting a pretty good mentor in NJ. <laughs> 20-point spread now. Boy, if you missed the first half, you missed a really great first half. This is really remarkable what Dean LaSalle's done in the second half. Coach Scott's pleased with that. Yeah. That's frustrating. There's Coach Stensgard kind of looking like, man, nothing yeah, is going our way all of a sudden. Nothing at least you could do there. Pretty good year for those guys. Holy smokes, two losses. You know what? The, 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 did Eric, didn't Eric say at halftime, Eric Martins, there would, be, would there be no consolation in third place game? That's right. That's right. Weems just powering her way to the bucket, decides to get the rebound, and then knocked loose by Chevry. Back out. To White, Savannah going to try drive. That's rejected, but there was a body foul prior to that. Couldn't quite get in front of her. TT wanted that block shot, but she can't get there defensively. Got to get your body there first. Savannah White at the free throw. That's Danzo's uh, third foul for Simley. The LaSalle Islanders out of Section 4, they come into this state tournament. The number one seed. White from the stripe tonight. Today, rather, two for four. Maybe you thought I was talking about a rock band. <laughs> White from the stripe. <laughs> there we go. Savannah White got them both. Good, good matchup, boys. Again, we've watched De La Salle 
put the full court pressure on from the opening tip. And they're still in that man-to-man. -man. They're up on top. Oh, my goodness. Miles wanted a call. And as she asked for it, she traveled. Yeah, this is a move that you don't want to do right in the middle of the game, regardless if you're frustrated. This is, and you get it. It's a big game, and she's showing some frustration. It happens. Yeah, Coach Stensgard needs a timeout. He's... He's not happy with uh, the official right now, but you can watch it yourself and figure it out. She's trying to communicate with her teammates. And in doing that, gets the ball knocked out of her hands. Yeah, so there was no call. Both uh, you saw coach and player both talking to the ref, but until you hear the whistle. Right. So that's a moment of frustration. De La Salle, the second half has been absolutely everything you would expect out of the Islanders, and then some, because the assembly team is really good. Yeah, and there and De La Salle will frustrate you because there's no relief, and there's not relief on either end of the court. And they're so deep that every player that comes in off that bench is another really good player. I'm trying to hear if they're doing the PA announcement right now about tomorrow's situation. Here where you heard Eric Martins, the president of City High School League, tell Chris that there will be different rules tomorrow. Executive director, rather. And so we'll have limited attendance. Be like a pass list. Look at the length of that three! Paul Runsway! Paulie That needed a flight plan. <laughs> oh man. Not shy about taking a long distance three. 62-37. It's a clinic by De La Salle right now. Yeah, they have clicked into another level. Look at this. She does a nice job of hustling, getting the ball where she wants it. But look at the release. And then boom. Oh, the man. hand. Sitting there just how you want to release it. It's a perfect release. Yeah. Yeah, that could go in a textbook with that follow through. Exactly. <laughs> Run a little clinic yeah, here after but, the game. But look there, you can see the lines. You got three of them. So she just oh, stands guard. But she just decided, well, I'm not going to confuse myself. I want to back right. it up and shoot it from my side, the third one. 62 39. White now will back it up. This is something you don't see D. LaSalle do. And then the stems guard will come out and stop that as quickly as she can for Sydney. That's foul number three. Some substitutions coming in now. That's a good look at the sophomore right there. Savannah White averages 10 points a game. She's done better than that in this one, that's for sure. At the start of this game, Simley really was doing such a great job of getting that ball down low into Chomp and TP, and they were so successful there. And so really figured out how to lock things down in the paint. Chevry had a wide open look there. And he missed it and did a great follow. A good hustle right there. Lock it. Shouting out some things to her teammates. Man, you look at this team and you realize they have one senior starter in the South squad. Oh boy. Spence got almost caused a turnover right there, but Lock will bring it right back to the top. Danza comes out on her now. Lockett, Stens guard. That's a nice matchup, isn't it? Yeah. They're just gonna take their time, pull their offense out, and then look for an easy basket. White draws the foul again on the drive. That's something that she's been able to do much of the second half. Really showing her versatility in this game. That's the fourth foul on TT Danza. Six times at the free throw line for Savannah. Made three of those. It's going to be something else she stays healthy in her senior year. I mean, what she's able to do right now as a sophomore, it's impressive. 6.43 in this game, De La Salle putting on a show in half number two. 
State semifinals continue on 45 TV. 30 years. Check out our play of the game tonight. Leah. Keani Lockett doing her thing, and she has been doing this all season long. But look at her ability to get here. This is what finishes off a 13-5 run. Her ability to get to the basket. She is this amazing player to watch and has been fun. I've seen her a couple times this season and has had the same type of game. Play of the game is uh, player of the game rather here and the play of the game brought to you by Minnesota Rusco. The play of the game since 1955. Uh, Dave Giles just made the announcement to the crowd during that timeout on the conditions tomorrow which changed dramatically. There will be no consolation games. There will be no third place games because of uh, everything going on with the coronavirus and then there's going to be uh, a number of uh, personnel here at the game regarding staff and uh, obviously the uh, members of the teams and their staff but then a small school approved list and I don't know exactly who that is if that's parents but it's going to be a, a small school approved so I'm going to ask you small school approved people that come in tomorrow to be really loud yeah you got extra pressure absolutely. on you to scream we're going to need some noise in here it's going to be weird 64-41. Simley. Crowd here today has been great. That first half crowd could not have been better in this opening game today. Stensgard, oh, there's going to be a foul right there. Oh, they're going to call it charge. It'll be on Stensgard. That's her fourth. And she comes in and I think that's a solid call. Yep. You got a good look right there. That's your head position. But you can call it at home. See what you think. 64 41. De La Salle, 621 to go. State championship game for the winner here will be Saturday night, 6 o'clock back at Williams. Man, we're looking at the history right now, aren't we, with all of the cancellations. The, the, the National Basketball Association was just bizarre last night, the way that came down. The fans there had to walk out. So it's just a sign of, unfortunately, of the current environment. Yeah, really crazy times. And keeping people healthy, obviously, the most important piece, but really weird how it's impacting everything. Hey, speaking of news, you can get your news at an earlier time. You can watch Lindsey Brown, Kevin Doran, and meteorologist Ren Claire for a full hour of news. That's Eyewitness News. That's at 9 on 45 TV. That's a great way to get updated every night right here. Especially now with news happening consistently through the day. It's significant news, I should say. Underneath. Ball knocked out of bounds. That's going to go off the Simley and back to De La Salle. That's just how difficult it is right now for Simley looking, moving the ball, and just not able to come up with anything. Yeah, the pace that we talked about, and uh, Rachel brought it up at halftime too, Rachel Bannum. It was just crazy how fast paced it was and back and forth. It certainly has not quite been that way as much here in the second half just because of the score. Yeah, and Vilosal hasn't needed to take it to that level that they took it to at the end of the first half. Wings. The other question is, and I know fans ask this a lot when they're out there watching. We all do, no matter what the game. There's, let's watch this shot. The runner is uh, going to bounce. That's kind of the way it's going right now. Lockett having another strong, steady game. But at what point do you pull starters as a coach, Leo? When do you make that decision? I'm not just talking about this game. It's often a question when you get a bit of a widespread right, score. Right, when you get this. And there's five minutes left in here. I would think here any, any time in the next couple of minutes. It's also nice to get some other players on the court to get them a little bit of experience out here. There's Miles connecting her first three of the afternoon. 100 points on the board. That's the thing about this De La Salle team. They're so young, but they have experience in this tournament. And so young players who know what it takes to win at the highest level. 110 points on the board now. We've been uh, watching De La Salle just pile them up here. Lock it. Backing it up. I just don't think De La Salle's used to 
you know, I wouldn't call it stalling, but just being deliberate. Weems, look at the spinner. They're getting the points exactly how they want to get the points. on the court. De La Salle dominating in the second half in the state semifinals on 45 TV. Buy it. Some great plays out here today and this is Chomp Donzo as she has done some outstanding work down low for Tim League. Rebounding the ball but on the other side it's another player in number 15. Sydney Runsway. She has been more than great in this game. Her ability to get to the basket, hit big shots. She plays with so much energy. Just her ability to get everybody else into this game has been really, really fun to watch. 68-44. De La Salle with the lead. In the state semifinal, again, uh, we'll have the uh, championship game on Saturday night right here from Williams. 6 o'clock broadcast time against the winner of this game and then the next game, Becker and Waconia. Well, that's going to be another good one. So another foul, then a little more contact in half number two than there was in half number one. And it was fun in half number one. They let them play, you know. It's just you get back and forth. It's exactly what fans love. So at the free throw line is Kennedy Click, the freshman. She's looking for double figures on this one. Sophomore, freshman, sophomore, sophomore, senior. That's your starting lineup at De La Salle. Similarly, as uh, Ali talked about, those seniors all growing up uh, together, playing together. And Chevry's going to go to Monmouth. Then Adonzo's going to go to Bradley. That's TT. Uh, Sydney Stensgard's going to Montana State. You see, Raven Miles has not made a decision yet. but So that friendship uh, will stay around, but they just have to do it on FaceTime, I guess. <laughs> that's exactly right. But a bond, probably a forever bond formed here. We're watching it right now. That's Miles trying to get the shot off in traffic. And uh, back out, Donzo. This is Sydney Stensgard into the hoop and a foul. She goes to the floor hard. That one hurt. Yeah. Well, she's a worker. I mean, you know, she's but, a workhorse. Yep, she just is going to give it all she has. And her dad has to be pretty. Pretty proud of her watching her play in this game. Yeah, that's her dad. Mark is the head coach, by the way. I don't know, we may have not mentioned that yet, but you know, you see your daughter go down first when she's hurt, and then you, then you, then she's your player at the same time. So, and she's been an outstanding player for you. She's he's been coaching her since the eighth grade, I believe. And it's nice when your kids want you to coach them. That is, you know, you know, it's, <laughs> a, good a, point. it's a lot of dad and child time there sometimes. <laughs> nice shot by Stenjo. I think she hurt herself pretty good there. At least yeah. the stung, you could see that. Well, the elbow's exactly where it was. But made shots will make it feel a little bit better. 70 to 45, De La Salle. Lock it. Look at that. Just so quick. We're going to keep it until she has that shot. And on the rebound, here's a foul. And this one will be... This will be on uh, De La Salle. I don't know. I'm waiting to see who the call is. It's kind of delayed. Yep. So we'll walk down here. Three for the De La Salle defending state champs. No strangers to the state tournament. They've been to 11 in the last 15 years. And there she is. She's coming back next year. She's a sophomore champ. Talking with the superintendent Bernardson from Simley, who I've known for many, many years, and uh, we we're talking about this team and what it's meant to the school. It's a and big deal, and it's, it's just really cool to see so many people come out and support you know, the girls' basketball team and the school and the administrators. Everyone completely behind them. Tanisha Scott calls a timeout as uh, they're in a little bit of trouble over there, so she. We'll have to settle down a little bit and talk here again. De La Salle 
has played a heck of a schedule uh, uh, this year. And you know, it's interesting. I talk, you, you've talked to some coaches so high that you know, the ones that have scheduled, like some of these teams, you play Hopkins and you play some of these 4A teams, yes. and you, you know you're probably going to get hammered. But they like playing it early on because it just makes them better down the road. Do you buy that argument? Yeah, I, I feel like everyone is moving to that direction as well as that. You have to challenge yourself even though a lot of times you end up losing those games. And um, you still have to see how hard it is, what, how much better we have to get. And once the players kind of get that in their head, then they can kind of play at a higher level throughout the rest of the season. That's the theory. Um, but I really see most of the teams doing that now. De La Salle with the ball and the big lead here as we wind down the second half. That's Weems. Weems sees a little opening, but she's going to try to dribble it back out. Use some clock here. Kennedy click. They've since about what the nine minute mark, Leah, they've been kind of doing this. Yeah, exactly. They're, yeah. they're running their offense and they're taking their time with it. White's going to take that shot. And Miles hangs on to it and she'll bring it down for Simley. Stensgard. Miles trying to set something up here. Neither team going away from their, their starting lineup for the most part. There's a shot from wow. Chop on a great dish. Good looking basketball right there. Lock it. Guarded by Chevy, the runner. Quick and easy. Everything just comes so easy for this deal and sell team, even though it's a lot of hard work they put in. They make it look so easy. And Deanna Lockett has just had an outstanding game. Yeah, she had the 19 yesterday, and right now she's at 12, I think. Might be a little more there. Oh, Stensgard. The never give up attitude from Stensgard. She's got 14. Lockett will take it. You know, it's interesting how they do this offense because it doesn't mean they're not going to shoot. We've seen them uh, taking time right. off the clock and then suddenly see nothing. So well, let's go take that shot. Been successful at it. It's different from what we've seen from Hopkins boys or different where you're actually in a stall tactic. Yeah. Um, this is them pulling out their offense to run it. By the way, those of you, uh, I know that many of you attending Hopkins games this year and been fun to it's fun there's been great crowds all over the state actually for girls basketball but you will get a chance to see that Hopkins team later tonight here on 45 TV Just kind of weaving back and forth under a minute oh, oh there's Chevron gets the steal and all by herself because he spent too much time on offense that can happen now Mark Stensgar wants a timeout so he can put his reserves in there and get some of the other kids in the state tournament There's a good look at Abby Hepper. I see coming to the game. Erin Borchard's been in the game earlier. She'll come back in. I see Ella Larson. She's just a sophomore. She'll be coming in for him as well. Those starters, Leah, and I know it's tough because you're losing 72 52. But again, getting back to what they said the spirit that they brought to the high school, the excitement, uh, the uh, talent level getting here into the state semifinals. And, it's been quite a run for them. It sure has. It's been an amazing season. These are talented players who are going out to do great things um, with a great head coach. Molly Stein is in the game. She's Sarah Borchard in the game. Now for Simley. D. LaSalle with 47 seconds. Inbounding the ball. Lock it. They'll keep their pretty much the starters in there right now with the final few seconds ticking away. Lock it to the wall. Oh, that is a great dish. Weems. Borchard. That's Aaron Borchard. To Sarah Borchard. A little baseline move. Back to Aaron and the runner in the lane will go. Good luck. De La Salle now coming up on the final 10 seconds. Runs way. Pretty balanced attack for the Islanders today, too. As it, as it is usual. Yeah, that's exactly right. They're going back to the state championship with a convincing 74. 52 win over a number three ranked Sibley Spartan team. Pretty impressive win. Yeah, 
we were lucky to witness a very good game of basketball, in particular in that first half. We really saw how well Simley can play this game. Great senior leadership on that Simley team, but Delisle was just too much. Oh, look at that. I mean, look at the line. 16, 13, 12, 19, 14 from your starting five. Leah, here's our player of the game brought to you by Preferred One. Achieve your best health with Preferred One Health Plans. Savannah White, 16 points, four boards. She did a lot for this thing throughout the entire game. Just came out, played a great game of basketball, strong. She's tall, lean, pushes the ball up the court, hits some threes. She did a little bit of everything in this one. That's a young team you're looking at, too. Tanisha Scott's got a, low, a boatload of talent coming back next year. Let's go court side. Here's Allie. Thanks, Dave. I've got Sydney. in the second half we just came out and said this is our game we can't lose we got to defend what we got last year so back-to-back -back state appearances for the title game you guys are headed there Saturday what are your thoughts on bringing home that second title it's exciting I think we can do it yeah I'm really confident how much fun do you have out there today a lot of fun it was good congrats yeah. Sydney thank you thanks Allie so there they go the victorious Islanders of De La Salle much more to come though with Chris and Marissa and Rachel. That's up next on 45 TV. Real results. The Post Game Show is brought to you by Children's Minnesota, the state's largest nonprofit pediatric health system. The De La Salle Islanders have played their way back into the state championship game and knock off the Simley Spartans 74-52 here in the first of our Flash 3A semifinals. Chris Long, high atop Williams Arena here on 45 TV. Joined again by Marissa Kate and Rachel Bantam. Marissa, De La Salle is a force to be reckoned with. We saw exactly why late in the first half and the second half of this game. They came out in that second half and really turned up their defensive pressure. They forced them into 22 turnovers and 11 steals. So I think the story of this game for me is De La Salle's second half defense. And they're just so deep, Rachel. I mean, De La Salle can just come at you with so many different weapons. Uh, it's tough. I mean, defensively they stepped up, but on offense, they scored from all levels. Their starting five uh, finished all in double figures. That's tough to defend. Yeah, and anytime you can do that, it's a sign of both a talented and an unselfish basketball team. But we did have a couple players we want to spotlight. Savannah White, our player of the game, Marissa, 16 points and four rebounds. She was all over the court. You know, Savannah White for me was a game changer. She was five for nine from the field, four rebounds, 16 points, two assists. This kid did a little bit of everything today for De La Salle. She is a sophomore, and so too is there. She is on the defensive end with the block down low. She's a sophomore, so too is Sydney Runsway. Last year, Rachel, we saw her really impress us as a freshman. Her green game is growing so much. I mean, four for four from three point range. You'll take that any day. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, that's tough to stop. And then she, she led the way at the end of the first half, got him on a run, and I think that continued that through the second half. Only a sophomore, but she stepped up. And then Jay Weems also not shown in these highlights, but she had 14 points and 11 rebounds. It's kind of the thing. It's not, we're talking about the offense, as you always do with the highlights, Marissa, but boy, their defense was so good in stopping Simley after about, what, 10, 11 minutes in that first half. Yeah, Simley just got tired. They got fatigued. They have a very short bench, so they didn't have a lot of subs to come in. And you know the term, defense wins championships. These stats are brought to you by friends in bank and trust. Real people, real results, obviously. Field goal percentage, we mentioned the turnovers. You figure, as it would, Rachel, the, the stats slanting De La Salle's way pretty much across the board. Absolutely. Uh, they just got to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, they're shooting lights out. They can continue to do that, share the ball. Uh, and it's going to be tough to stop them. The De La Salle Islanders back in the state championship game. They're seeking their fifth title. 